Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about classes in JavaScript ES6. So to get started we're just going to create a simple person class. So I'm just going to say class and then we're just going to say person and within here we're going to see a familiar word if you're familiar with Java, C++, or C Sharp. So you're going to see a word called constructor. Now constructor is going to be called whenever you say new. So this constructor is going to be invoked whenever we create a new instance of this person. Now every person is going to have a first name, a last name, and an age. And within here to set the properties like we normally would for objects, we're just going to say this dot first name is going to be assigned first name. And we're going to say this dot last name is going to be assigned last name and etc. So age is going to be equal to age. And if we were to actually call this now, so I could say let person is equal to new person. And I can say Pedro, here I can say Mikado, and the age I can say 10. And let's print out this newly created object. So let's save it, head over to Chrome, and let's run it. And you can see that we get an instance of the person object. We get first name is Pedro, last name Mikado, and the age of 10. So now let's see how we could go about adding methods to this object. So for one, I can say get full name like so. And within here, I can just say return this dot first name plus and have a space this dot last name. And now if I call this, so let's actually just use this get full name, call the method, save it, head over to Chrome, hit refresh, and you can see get full name returns Pedro Mercado. Now, whenever we create a method within a class, what we're really doing is adding to the prototype. So for example, if I wanted to prove that, I can say console.log person dot prototype dot get full name. And now if I save this and run it, you can see that get full name is indeed on the prototype of the person object. So here's the printout of that function. Now that we got properties and methods out of the way, let's talk about static members. So in order to create a static method, you would just use the keyword static and I can just say get ID. Keep it very simplistic and we're just going to return one. And now it's important to note that if you're using static methods, that instances of the person cannot use it. So for example, if I was to say person dot get ID and try to run it, let's save it, head over to Chrome, execute it. You see that we get an error. So remember to always use it on the class itself. So person. So I'm just going to copy this, paste this here, and let's just print this out onto the console. Save it, head over to Chrome, hit refresh, and you can see that we get the value of one. So now let's talk about inheritance. So I have this person class and let's create another class to inherit from that person class. So I'm just going to say class and I'm just going to say teacher. And now within teachers constructor, I can say constructor and we're going to have first name, last name, age, and we're going to say job, right? And within this constructor, we are going to say super. 
Now super is actually going to call the person classes constructor. So if I was just to type extends and I was to say person, now the teacher is inheriting from the person class. So I'm going to super up and pass in the arguments first name, last name, and age. And then within here, I can say this.job and assign it job. And just for some clarification, I'm actually going to print person constructor being invoked. So this is just to let us know that we are calling uh, this constructor is being called whenever we instantiate an instance of the teacher object. So now let's cre actually create our teacher object. So I'm just going to say let teacher equal new teacher. And we're going to say Bob, Billy, let's say he's 11 and let's say uh, he's a math teacher. And let's actually print out this teacher. Teacher. Let's tidy this up a bit. And now let's save it and head over to Chrome to run it. So now you can see our teacher object being printed out. You can see that our person constructor is being invoked when we create our teacher object. You can see the teacher object has first name, last name, age, and the job is math teacher. So basically, whenever you use super, you're always calling the parent. So in this case, teacher is inheriting from person. So when I pass super, I am passing in the arguments that matches person's constructor. So I have first name here, last name here, and age. And you can see in our person constructor that it has first name, last name, and age. And last but not least, I want to talk about setters and getters in classes. So let's say uh, I want to give this teacher a salary. And this time I'm just going to hard code it. So I'm just going to say this and I'm going to say underscore salary is going to be equal to $10 a year. So within here, I can say get and then I can say salary. And I could just return salary underscore salary. And I should probably say this. And here I can say set salary. And within here, I can say this dot underscore salary is going to be set to the salary that would be passed in. So you have your basic getters and setters, and you basically have a convenience way of doing it. Instead of saying get salary and set salary, you could just specify get and set as the keyword followed by a space. So now you might be asking, if my getter and setter are named salary, how do I access them? Well, the easy way to do it is just through properties. So for example, instead of console.logging teacher, if I wanted to call the get salary, I would just say teacher dot salary. And let's see here dot salary. When I say teacher dot salary is going to know that I'm reading it in. So it's going to call the get uh, the get method. So if I save this and run this, you can see that we get the salary of 10. So now what happens if I want to use the set salary? Well, on the next line, I'm just going to say teacher dot salary. And let's set it to 15. 
And to prove that it's been set to 15, let's copy and paste this. And now I'm just going to save it, head over to Chrome, run it. And you can see that we updated the teacher's salary to $15.